Now, I know I said in a prior video about the um, Force Awakens trailer, I think it was, where um, I would talk about the Star Wars movies for every Friday every week. I'm sorry I missed out on last week's Friday at the time of this video. It's simply because I got sick with a sore throat and all that happened. And if you saw my Survivor Series video, then you would understand what I'm saying. So I really apologize on that. But I'm here to talk about Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. The very worst of the prequels, <laughs> in my honest opinion. Uh, okay. I can handle the exposition. I can handle the CGI. I can handle a lot of things about episode two. I can even handle Jar Jar Binks giving this giving Palpatine emergency powers, even though that just sounds really stupid the way I just said that. But if you are to tell me that Anakin Skywalker and Padme Amidala are really in love with each other, I will say that that's overstretching my my suspension of disbelief. Like, my God. Like, like, I can't take this romance they did in episode two. I really don't like it. That, that's the one major vi problem I have with it. That I really can't ha stand this romance they do. Like, it's just exposition romance, not true, true romance. Where they start to do things like... In fact, here's the thing. When I first saw Attack of the Clones, I think I had, as a child, developed the ability to block out certain scenes in movies. <laughs> Like, as a child, like, I could, like, I managed to block out Jar Jar Binks' scenes where he acts like a humorous ca comedian, or at least in his mind, a comedian. Or the poop joke they did in episode one. Like, I completely forgot about that. I didn't, rem I, like, I haven't watched Phantom Menace in a while, and I, someone pointed this out, like, oh, there was a poop joke in episode one, and, wait, there was? Oh, I didn't know that. And I've watched The Phantom Menace how many times? Must have really blocked that blocked that out. Like that scene was just so stupid and so out of place that I just repressed it. So yeah, and like there's only one good joke in episode two where uh, Obi Wan uses mind trick on this drug dealer, and all I also kept wondering at the same time is, wait, um, what gave you the right to say that guy needs to rethink his life? Like, okay, yes, he's a drug dealer, therefore he has problems and whatnot, but, like, the Jedi are not supposed to discriminate according to their code in the Expanded Universe, like, a hundred times, but we've already covered this in my interpretation of Star Wars series, but, uh... Okay, there was an, there was an interesting theory I made in Attack of the Clones talking about Hayden Christensen's acting... In episode two, like, okay, I'm gonna just say it. I, I kind of like it <laughs> to an extent. Like, I don't like when Hayden Christensen tries to break down in tears. Like, it just doesn't feel like he's breaking down in tears when he's just saying exposition. Like, there's some moments he has where he sells it with his facial expression when he when he's holding his mother in his arms and he's selling his facial expressions. Like, that tells a million things instead of what words can say. And then they ruin the moment where he says, And the women. And the children. And I saw them like animals. I hate them. And like, dude, you just ruined the perfect best scene in the episode 2 movie. Like, Anakin sold it with his facial expressions, not not with words. Like, that was the best way you could have done it, and you screwed it up. <sighs> but the romance is what really turned me off of this movie. Like, oh, God. Like, I can't take this relationship seriously. Like, in fact, as a kid, I, I completely forgot, zoned out. Like, I don't recall the sand, con the sand dialogue where he says... I don't like sand. It's coarse, rough, and irritating, and it gets all over. And, like, I just completely forgot about that. It wasn't until, like, around 2014 when I saw a person showing a scene of it, and I'm like, wait, that happened? Huh. Why can't I remember that? And there's a lot of things I remember about being when I was a kid. So, I was surprised that, that by that <laughs> a little bit. But, like, even I was saying, oh, my God. This is just horrible. And now there is some people that say episode 2 is better than episode 1 for one reason. It's because Jar Jar Binks is in, in this movie a lot. But that's that's not a good reason in my honest opinion. Like, like you can say that, but like, compare episode 1 to episode 2. Episode 1 is just better in my opinion. And 
And there's also the and there's and though Attack of the Clones did make me think more about the Star Wars universe more a bit, like especially when Anakin is criticizing Obi Wan behind his back, where he says he's overly critical, he never listens. And I'm just thinking, um, aren't Obi Wan and Anakin supposed to be best of friends? Like in Episode Four, Obi Wan says, and he was a good friend. And Jeremy Johns says, he's a real piece of shit. I really hope the Appleville, very far from the tree. <laughs> oh, Jeremy Johns is so funny. But, uh, now, there is a theory to me that came to me when I was watching episode two. What if Obi-Wan and Anakin weren't really friends? Like, Obi-Wan seems to think they're friends, but Anakin, he just acts like they're friends, like, right in front of them. And then, behind the scenes, he just bashes Obi-Wan a lot. Like, it just feels like Obi-Wan and Anakin aren't really friends. I never got that vibe from them. And in fact, considering Obi-Wan flat out somewhat lied to Luke, I wouldn't be surprised if he lied about the friends part. Like, and if anyone saw my Anakin Skywalker video, I said that maybe Anakin was using Obi-Wan later on because he even said in... The Clone Wars series, how much he wants to walk away from the Jedi Order, and how I described it as this abusive relationship he can't get out of, because he has reasons to stay, they need him, he needs them, but he needs them to protect his wife, so, yeah, that that's that, that's a very interesting theory I came up with, where um, Obi-Wan and Anakin weren't really friends, it just felt like that, but it really wasn't, like, I didn't really, I never got that vibe. So, and, like, some people could say, oh, it's because of bad writing, but who's to say that George Lucas wanted to have people think that Obi-Wan and Anakin weren't really friends? That Obi-Wan might have lied about that, or maybe Obi-Wan thought they were, but Anakin hid, hid his anger and resentment towards Obi-Wan? Like, in the Clone Wars animated series by the creator of Samurai Jack, um, Anakin flat out admits that compared to Obi-Wan, he's no Qui-Gon Jinn. So... There's that all theory as well. That that kind of builds up to the theory of Obi-Wan and Anakin not really being friends. So there's also that. Now, the only time I felt there was a relationship connection with Padme and Anakin was during the Battle of Geonosis. And Anakin smugly says, uh, oh, is this what you call a diplomatic solution? And Padme says, no, I like to call it aggressive negotiation. And I'm like, oh my god, that actually that actually felt like there was a chemistry there. So they could have a chemistry. It's just the bad writing is screwing it up. Like, it just felt like that. Like, that was the only time I actually felt like, oh, maybe there is something between um, Anakin and Padme. Maybe there really can be some chemistry. But no, they it only happens once and that's it. So, yeah. I don't like episode two as much as episode one, but I'm like I still watch it because it's a Star Wars movie and the prequels did hold a special place in my heart since it introduced me to Star Wars. But if you were to tell me where would I rank it between episode one and two, I say episode one's better. Well, everyone, this was Neo Reality Entertainer. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and donate. And stay tuned for more.